It gives wisdom to the poor. His precepts all are right. They make the heart delighted. His statutes all are clear. They give our eyes new In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Hearty welcome to the Eucharist, my dear brothers and sisters. At, at the end of the week, once again, the third week of Easter, Saturday. Thank God for all the joys he's given, for all the graces he's given you during the week. Uh, I want to also present to you the many prayers that have come uh, from all of you and share them with you. Let's keep them in our minds, in our hearts, as we lift them up to God. Thanksgiving uh, for the 50th wedding anniversary of my parents on the 18th uh, April. Then for the 28th wedding anniversary uh, on the 23rd of April of uh, uh, one of the persons promoting a lot of family apostolate and who is just recovering, thanking God for recovery from COVID and recovery and also the blessings of a marriage. Blessing for thanksgiving for blessing me the first class for my masters in literature. Then uh, family in India tasted positive, tested positive for COVID, but now they have recovered. Thanks for my father coming back from the hospital. Uh, went under uh, histo hysteroscopic polypectomy uh, and was successful. Prayers for good health and spiritual well-being, going through very difficult times. I have a mental sickness, for I feel everything is dirty. I've seen that people who want always have the compulsion to wash your hands. Uh, for my daughter's autistic child, cure from cancer, of the lungs, my aunt who is suffering from GB syndrome, I'm suffering from varicose veins, very painful. Praying for the family, for my sister, for domestic issues at home, asking God to bless my family, that my son comes back to the faith, that he and his wife are ready for to have children. My father to be restored to full health, ventilator to be removed. For my daughter's PCOS problem for ni nine months now, for reconciliation, my daughter. Prayer request from a humble, sad, and repented mother for my son's life. For the divorce proceedings to be cancelled and his wife to reunite, she feels guilty for having been involved in this for good health and blessings to my family, for repose of soul, somebody who died on the 22nd of March, 2021, soul of my brother-in-law passed away, my granny's soul, second month's mind, 22nd April, for third death anniversary, 26th of April, for the first anniversary of my father, 21st of April, Soul of my mother completes 34 years in a heavenly abode. Praying for a life partner of my daughter, for myself, for a good Catholic life partner, myself, I'm 29 years old, for good life partners, my, both my daughters, for a good marital relationship between a couple. For good jobs, pray for my Passport should come without difficulty. Pray that I might find a favorable job. Job for my son-in-law. Blessing a wonderful job, was out of business. For our daughter, admission to post-MD studies as a doctor in the USA. Then 
tomorrow we pray for uh, on the 18th of April for Mr. and Mrs. So and So on the 50th anniversary, 21st of April, a birthday, my sister. For my properties, maternal and paternal, may lawfully obtain them. And finally, a few for COVID. My uncle and his family affected. All of us as a family are down with COVID. My brother-in-law is ICU in Delhi, very unwell. From a friend of mine, he'll complete COVID. My neighbor, my husband's first cousin, 36 year old, in ICU for more than three weeks. We pray for all these intentions. They ask with sincerity, asking for your generosity. We all pray for them. But now let's ask God's forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done, what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in the font of baptism have made new those who believe in you, keep safe those reborn in Christ, that defeating every onslaught of error, they may faithfully preserve the grace of your blessing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please sit for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. Now as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the upper room, all the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Your response shall be, How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? Together. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. Our response. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your response. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? Your servant, Lord, your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds, a thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. Our response, 
how can i repay the lord for all his goodness to me arise as we prepare our hearts for the gospel hallelujah hallelujah your words lord are spirit and life you have the words of eternal life hallelujah the lord be with you and, and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord at that time when many of the disciples of jesus heard it they said this is a hard saying who can listen to it but jesus knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this said to them do you take offense at this then what if you were to see the son of man ascending to where he was before it is the spirit who gives life the flesh is no help at all the words that i have spoken to you are spirit and life but there are some of you who do not believe for jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him and he said this is why i told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted to him by my father after this many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him so jesus said to the 12 Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, "Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the holy one of God." The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers in the responsorial psalm you said we said how can i repay the lord for all his goodness to me how very true it is the words of the psalm 116 words of david praying praying to god and say how can i ever repay you for all that you have given me a feeling of thanksgiving should swell from our hearts every now and then as we think of how good and generous and kind the lord is to us even in this pandemic time even in this time when the cases are going up the first reading uh, is uh, peter comes center stage and we heard here peace had come and was the church was being built up we know the history what had happened stephen's pers- martyrdom prayed for his persecutors then we have the dramatic uh, conversion of saint paul who was persecuting the church then paul goes to damascus is baptized goes to damascus preaches over there for a long time they say almost 3 years and then he goes to uh, goes to maybe before that goes briefly to arabia say and stays there perhaps to pray to reflect to make a sort of a long retreat then comes back and for 3 years he preached in damascus and we have in the acts telling us the story of uh, the early church the peter comes now center stage like if you were seeing like it's a scene paul was there center stage all about paul and now peter comes center stage and you have today's uh, reading from the acts of the apostles uh, Peter working two miracles the first miracle somebody who was sick he cures him and then the second miracle he says uh, he found a man named Aeneas bedridden for 88 years paralyzed and Paul Peter just tells him Jesus Christ heals you no he doesn't say i'm healing you rise Jesus Christ heals you it is Jesus who's healing you Jesus the center uh, we he realizes conscious of the fact that everything is done with the power of jesus and then again 
Second one is even more uh, dramatic. This lady, Tabita, had died, sick, died, and they had laid up her body uh, for final disposal. And then Peter comes there. She was somebody who was working very much for the community, prepared lots of things for the community, serving them, uh, fully dedicated. Peter kneels, prays to God, and then he calls her and Tabita arise. She reminds us of Jesus calling, uh, telling Jairus' daughter, rise. Again, Peter works a miracle, but he knelt down and prayed. It was not therefore very clearly showing. It's not his power. He's not the one curing. It is Jesus curing. Jesus, to whom shall we go? The same Peter, now we have in the Gospel passage, this, uh, the whole chapter 6 we're still completing. Today we complete chapter 6. It's a whole week we've been hearing chapter 6, John 6. Uh, it is, uh, it's nice to read it, I encourage you to read it, but it's very heavily theological. It's about the Eucharist, but every time you read it, sisters and brothers like me also, uh, we get one more insight, so you get understand one more bit of uh, Jesus and the Eucharist. And uh, naturally Jesus is saying, eat my body, drink my blood, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Uh, they were all upset. And note, uh, around him, according to what we hear here, were his disciples, his own disciples. It's not the general crowd which is really upset. And naturally, uh, who would not be, he says, now you eat my flesh, eat me, and drink my blood. And his own disciples began getting uh, a little unnerved, wondering how to follow, and they stop following him. But Jesus does not water it down. That's one of the clear proofs of the fact that he, this is a central point of his doctrine, that he is present in the Eucharist. There's no... Uh, question of compromise. He is present, body and blood, soul and divinity. And ask him, do you take offense at it? And uh, here already John is putting his uh, comments. He says he knew who were not believing him, that they were all hesitating. He read their minds. And already now he knew who was going to betray him. Already here in chapter 6, we have uh, an indication of the betrayal of Judas, which will happen much, much later. But the, so you have, therefore, uh, Jesus turning finally to his own 12 innermost group and asking them, will you also go away? Uh, if you have got to go, you've got to go. I cannot change what I'm doing, cannot change my doctrine. And Peter, as usual, the one to, not the cleverest, I'm sure all of them did not understand what Jesus was saying. None of them could have understood. Uh, even we, we don't understand it 2,000 years later. And Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter was attached to the person of Jesus. Following Jesus is not just believing, not just trying to understand, not just trying to follow what he uh, says, like trying to do some acts of charity or prayer or rituals, but attachment to a person that is discipleship of Jesus and these apostles began attached to him and you and I uh, sisters and brothers as we grow in our spirituality uh, by these reflections and hearing the Word of God should also get more and more attached to the person of Jesus like Peter in difficult moments we should say to the Lord Lord to whom shall we go there's no one else uh, I don't fully understand I can't fully ac accept, but to whom shall we go? You are the only one for us. You are my everything. And then uh, you are the Holy One of God. Again, Peter surely, uh, without doubt, did not understand fully that Jesus was God. Did not understand that he was the Son of God. He knew he was the Messiah, the sent like one of the prophets, nothing more. But his adherence and discipleship of Jesus was because he was adhered to the person. And so we too, you and I, also try through our prayer life, through our reading, scripture readings, reflections on the uh, saints to come closer and closer to the Lord and be attached to the person that we also can say in all moments of difficulty, Lord, to whom shall we go? And today is the feast of Saint Fidelis of Singh Maringan. He was uh, he died in 1622. Uh, he was a very clever person. He was 
uh, in Switzerland, in Freiburg, I think, born over there. He specialized in studies, civil law, canon law, philosophy, and was teaching, he was uh, so good, he was teaching the children of nobles in, say, in Italy, France, and Spain. But finally, he felt uh, drawn to the gospel of Jesus, began helping the poor, and working as a lawyer for the poor people. They called him a poor man's lawyer, that's what they would call him. Finally joined the Capuchins in 1612, and uh, then he began preaching. That was the time of the uh, Reformation. He began preaching very strongly against Calvin, who was strong in that area of Switzerland, and was finally martyred in 1622. Uh, gave his life for the Lord, uh, and he's, he's a patron of all lawyers. So lawyers, happy feast, because he studied civil law, canon law, was a doctor in that. Uh, we pray to St. Fidelis also uh, to fill in our hearts a love for Jesus, that we can say like Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery is water and wine, Will he come to share in his divinity? He humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they've received, but attain gifts that are eternal. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed. Integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. As I begin the canon, I want you to remember the many people have asked for the prayers uh, today. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Fidelis of St. Maringan and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced with eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, May we always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, with your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your Church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Stop with the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive him.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those you have redeemed by your kindness, that, saved by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in the resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you once again for participating and pray for all these intentions. And have a lovely weekend, what's left of it, even in the, in the time of this lockdown, this inconvenience. But thank the Lord. What thanks, what uh, how can I repay the Lord for all his good things to me? See, keep on saying that psalm and you'll feel the joy and the presence of the Lord and the strength of the Lord. Keep well and we'll pray for each other. God bless you. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
we find such joy in your abundant life. You are the source of our great joy, the fountain of all life. You give us living water, you bid us come and drink. We come to you, we bless you, Lord. We glorify your name, we praise you, Lord, we worship you, we thank you for your gift of new life. New life, new life, you came to bring us new life, new life. Find such joy in your abundance.